Hello everyone, today we're looking at the topic of statics in mechanics and effectively this is linked to the topic of equilibrium. So we're going to look at three examples today, one which is based around a horizontal plane or in free space, another one which is also based around a horizontal plane or free space and then one which is on an inclined plane. Now the reason why I'm separating these into two categories is that whenever we do force questions when you're dealing with horizontal forces or horizontal planes versus inclined planes, on a horizontal plane, you always look at forces up and down or left and right, a parallel and perpendicular to the motion. However, when something's in equilibrium or it's static, it means that it's not moving or it's in a state of constant velocity. Now that links to Newton's first law. And in that scenario, the acceleration is equal to zero and the forces are balanced. So what we can say is that the forces up must equal the forces down and the forces left must equal the forces right. So we'll be working up and down and left and right in that scenario. Whereas in an inclined plane, we always talk about being parallel and perpendicular to the plane. So we always look at the forces going parallel to the slope and up the slope versus parallel to the slope and down the slope for a normal inclined plane like that. And then you also look at the forces perpendicular going out of the plane and perpendicular going into the plane. And again, these are equal to each other. So this is going to be critical when we come to our inclined plane questions. So we're going to start with just a scenario where we're looking at a particle in free space, which we can see over here. So what we have over here is a particle in the middle that has three forces acting on it. It's got P acting at an angle of 30 degrees. Uh, above the horizontal and to the right it's got q to the left and then 10 newtons acting downwards into the left at an angle of 40 degrees to the vertical so with regard to all these situations we said we're dealing with a question where it's horizontal or in free space so we're going to be looking at forces up and down and left and right so if we go around our forces we can see q is already acting in the left direction so we don't actually need to resolve this these two forces can be split into components which are parallel and perpendicular, or in this case, up and down. So if we first look at P, well, P is going to the top and to the right. So we can say that means this can be split up into a force to the right and a force going vertically upwards. Now, here is our angle, which means this is our opposite, this is our adjacent. So we can say this is going to be P sine 30, and this is going to be P cos. 30, so vertical force and horizontal force. In the same way, we also need to resolve our 10 newtons. So 10 newtons is going down and left. So again, I'm going to draw my arrows, one coming down and one coming to the left. That means this force over here is my opposite, which is 10 sine 40. And this force over here is my 10 cos 40. Now, what I've got here are all my forces split up into the correct components. And we now just need to use this principle here. Up is equal to down, left is equal to right. So if we start with up equal to down, we can see the forces going up here is P sine 30 and P sine 30 only. So I'm going to write P sine 30 on the left is equal to the forces going down, or P cos 30 is left and right. 10 cos 40 is actually going downwards. 10 sine 40 is left and right, and Q is also left and right. So here is our equation with one unknown. So therefore, P is equal to 10 cos 40 divided by sine 30, which gives us a value of 15.3 newtons or 15.32 newtons. So we then looked at up equal to down. Now we need to just move that to left is equal to right. So if we look at the forces acting to the left, the only forces acting to the left are Q. Q is coming to the left and 10 sine 40 is coming to the left. So if we say left is equal to right, we have Q plus 10 sine 40 is equal to P cos 30, because that is going to the right. Now that's got two unknowns in it, but we've just worked out P in the previous part. 
So therefore, Q is equal to 15.3 cos 30, which is 0. Point, sorry, times by 15.32 is 13.26 minus the 10 sine 40. So minus 10 sine 40 gives us a value of 6.84 newtons. So all we've done there is we've worked out P and Q via looking at the forces up, down, left, and right. So that was a particle that's in free space. We're now going to look at a slightly more complicated example, but this time on a horizontal plane. What I have over here is a five kilogram particle that's being acted upon by a variety of different forces. A reaction force which we are told is 30 newtons, a 57 newton force to the right, a force of P to the top and to the left, an angle of theta, which we don't know. And because it's acting on a surface, or in this case, it's a particle with mass, it has 5G weight coming down. And this is a particle that's in a horizontal plane or in free space. So once again, we need to look at up, down, left, and right. Well, the 5G is already acting down. The 57 is acting to the right. The 30 is acting up. So only this force of P needs to be resolved. So if we can see this is going up and to the left, I'm going to continue this line to the left and then draw a line vertically upwards. Here is our angle. So this is our opposite. So this is P sine theta and this is P cos theta. Now this is a bit different. This is not what kind of what we're used to when we have unknowns because normally we don't have angles. But those of you that are comfortable with pure, we will see the method in which we do this. The first thing we going to say is that up is equal to down. The forces going up are P sine theta and the 30, and then we've got 5G coming down. So we've got P sine theta plus 30 is equal to 5G. Now, similarly, we see we need a, a diagram or an equation for forces left are equal to forces to the right. So if we look at the forces to the left, that is P cos theta. Forces to the right are 57. So we say left is equal to right. We can say that P cos theta is equal to 57. Now, when you're solving a simultaneous equation where you've got a value times by sine theta and a value times by cos theta, you want to make the P sine theta or P cos theta the subject. So over here, this becomes P sine theta is equal to 5g, which is 5 times 9.8, minus 30, which is equal to a value of 19. So that was 5g minus 30, that's equal to 19. P cos theta is equal to 57. The reason why I've written it like this with sine theta above cos theta is because if you divide sine theta by cos theta, or divide the two equations, we call this equation number one and this equation number two, when you do one divided by two, the p's will cancel out, and sine theta over cos theta actually gives us tan theta. 19 divided by 57 is one third. And therefore, we can now work out the value of theta. Doing arc tan or tan inverse of third gives us a value of theta equal to 18.43 degrees. We now have the value of theta if you substitute back into one of these equations. So if we say P sine 18.43 is equal to 19, if we do 19 divided by sine of 18.43, we get a value for P is equal to 60.08 or 60.1 newtons. Okay, so once again, we've looked at a scenario here. We've resolved our forces into horizontal and vertical because we're looking at a particle on a horizontal plane. We've said up is equal to down, left is equal to right, and then applied our simultaneous equations. We're now going to look at our final example on inclined planes and linking this into equilibrium. Okay, so what we have over here is a 10 kilogram particle that is being held 
by a force of P at an angle of 30 degrees to the plane. And the plane itself is at an angle of 20 degrees. So now we're looking at inclined planes. We're no longer looking at up and down and left and right. We're now looking at parallel to the slope and perpendicular to the slope. So the first thing to do is to put our remaining forces on that we don't have present at the moment. Now it's a 10 kilogram block, meaning there is a weight of 10 G coming down. And there's our reaction force coming perpendicular to the slope. Now, because this is acting on an inclined plane, we need to resolve the 10G parallel and perpendicular. So if I drop my perpendicular over here and then make it parallel, the 20 degrees comes up to here, giving us a value over here of 10G cos 20 and over here 10G sine 20. We also need to resolve our force P because that is also not acting parallel or perpendicular. We can see that we just continue our line across over here. We get our parallel and then it's acting outwards, giving our perpendicular. So this is going to be P cos 30 and P sine 30. Now, once again, there are two unknowns in this question. We're trying to find the values of R and P, R being the normal reaction force and P being the value of the force. So we're going to look at forces parallel up the slope and down the slope first, and then we're going to go perpendicular as well. So if we look at the forces going parallel and up the slope equal to the forces going parallel down the slope, up the slope is P cos 30. P cos 30. And down the slope is 10G sine 20. Now we have there an equation with only one unknown. So we can simply work out the value of P by taking 10 times by 9.8 sine 20 and dividing that by cos 30 to give us a value for P equal to 38.7 newtons. 38.7 newtons for our value of P. Now, if you want the value of R, we need to look in the other direction, which is perpendicular. To the slope r is acting perpendicular and out p sine 30 is also acting perpendicular and out and 10g cos 20 is acting perpendicular and in so we can say that r plus p sine 30 is equal to 10g cos 20. now if we rearrange this r is equal to 10g cos 20 minus p sine 30. Now p is 38.7, so 38.7 sine 30. And if we finally substitute that into our calculator, we get 10 times by 9.8 cos 20 minus 38.7 sine 30. And that is a value of 72. 0.7 newtons and effectively that's it that's our final answer and as we said what we've done there is we looked at our inclined plane we resolved our forces parallel and perpendicular to it and then because this is an equilibrium because it's a static particle we said forces up the slope which are parallel equal the forces down the slope which are parallel and then forces perpendicular out of the slope are equal to forces perpendicular into the slope anyway i hope that's made sense if it hasn't, please leave a comment below or message me directly. Thanks for watching. Take care and goodbye.